Numbers chapter 20 verse 20. Then he said, you shall not pass through. So Edom came out against them with many men and with a strong hand. From the story we've just read. These were the people of Israel, born of God and born of God's spirit. And they were in a journey. A journey ordained by God to step into their destinies. They were called of God's spirit. They knew what they wanted. And they were ready to move through the things that they were called to do. But let me tell you something. The devil is not going to sit down allowing you to step into your destiny. The devil is not going to sit down allowing you to step into the plans of God concerning your life. We don't negotiate our prophetic destinies. We seize our prophetic destinies. Because the Bible tells me that right from the days of John the Baptist, God's kingdom has suffered violence and it takes the violence to take it by force. When you know that what you do is going to affect the destinies of nations and people, you can't afford to be silent. Look at the state of the 21st century when you check through the, the news media you see all manner of calamities you see storms you see earthquakes you see diseases you see all manner of things but if you need to survive and if you need to make your impact felt in our world then you need to pray the way you've never prayed before pray until something happens pray until you divorce sickness pray until you dethrone poverty pray until something happens in your life you were not condemned to live in perpetual failure you were not conditioned to live in perpetual defeat you were not conditioned to live in perpetual sorrow is there someone in this place who has come to a realization that you were made for something much more bigger than what you're going through if you that man that woman touch two three people and give them a high five and say this is my time i am stepping into greater dimensions of faith i am stepping into the glory of god i am stepping into power i am stepping and i am unstoppable i do not exist at the mercy of the devil i do not exist at the mercy of some evil man i have a plan and these are god's plans for my life and i intend to finish my race strong the devil did not create you and the enemies did not create you you were a product of god you were given a destiny plan and the destiny plan is, is predicated on the word of God that means uh, precept upon precept line upon line chapter upon chapter so shall you step into faith uh, if you want to see things happening in your life if you want to see great things in your life you need to step up your faith level the Bible tells me in the book of Romans 1 17 that the just shall live by faith not how you feel the just shall live by faith Jude 20 tells me contend for the faith that was once delivered that was once delivered unto the saint we fight to get what we need we fight to dethrone the powers of darkness we fight to dethrone opposition because if you don't fight the devil's gonna stop you if you don't fight the devil's gonna keep you in one place if you don't fight the devil's gonna make you sick if you don't fight the devil's gonna make you a failure you were born and ordained for great things touch two three people and tell them i will overcome i will overcome by the word of god i will overcome by the power of my testimony i will overcome by walking in obedience i will overcome by confessing the word of god i will overcome what do you see i see greatness i see power i see a nation waiting to be conquered for the glory of god i have a dream that someday the we will take the word of god to mindanao luzon and visayas and nations we tremble at the name of Jesus I have a dream that someday as we preach the word of God the cripples and the dead and those who are deaf and dumb they will the gospel of God is not powerless the gospel of God has the power to transform nations if you are exposed to the word of God and nothing is happening in your life it simply means that something is radically wrong they tell you, oh, Bishop Tony is too radical. Tell me, tell me something about the devil. The devil is radical. They tell me, Bishop Tony is too aggressive. The devil never stops. If there's something you need to learn from the devil, he never gives up. When he tempted Jesus, he didn't give up. He, he went out so that he can come again. 
You can't carry the power of the Holy Spirit and be weak. You can't carry the power of the Holy Spirit and be fearful. You can't carry the power of the Holy Spirit and be inconsequential. You want to change your nation, you need to change the way you think. There is no mountain that you can climb by the power of God. There is no valley that can't be leveled by the power of God. There is no crooked path that can't be made straight by the power of God. But we limit God by the things we allow in our spirits. This year, run away from people who talk small things. Because small talk is not going to give you big things. This year, run away from people who have small minds. The Bible makes it clear that if you have faith and you tell this mountain, you mountain be removed. And if you don't have doubt, every mountain will be removed. I speak into your lives prophetically that every mountain standing against you and your purpose for 2020 is removed by the word of God. I speak into your destiny that this year you will never experience failure. You will move from glory to glory, from power to power, from strength to strength. I speak into mortal bodies. If there is something in your DNA, if there is something in your mind that has kept you small by the mystery of the word of God I declare change is coming someone is being taken to the next level of glory if you believe that shout hallelujah. hallelujah so the people of Israel were caught up in this situation they wanted to step into the next dimension of faith because God had called them to go to the next level but the enemy came to stop them to achieve your greatest aspirations, you must be prepared to defeat your biggest obstacles. Only the audacity of faith can silence the tenacity of fear and the tyranny of dominant powers. Do you have faith? Faith is not what we wish for. Faith is what we do. Faith involves an action. If you are not doing anything, then that's not faith. Faith is obeying the incredible for you to see the impossible. If you don't obey the incredible, you ain't going to see the impossible happening in your life. So what is Edom? Edom represents spirit, soul, and body. Let me tell you something about Edom. The founding father of Edom was Esau. And Esau was the brother of Jacob. And so he was aggrieved that Jacob took his birthright. He sold his birthright. If you want to see great things in your life happening, you must understand your calling and aspiration. You should magnify what God has called you to do. You don't trade your birthright. There is nothing big enough to challenge that which God has given to you. You cannot compromise your conviction. We must be people of conviction. We must have principles by, that we live by we must have principles because if you compromise your conviction the devil and the enemy will take advantage of your weaknesses so Edom was a creation of the principles and the policies of Esau Esau was someone who didn't have conviction for a plate of food porridge he sold his birthright you can't sell your birthright you must understand who God has called you to be. Despite what you're going through, do not compromise. And Edom also represents a soulish realm. For you to become the vessel that God wants you to be, the Spirit of God must always control your soul. God is a spirit, and the Bible tells me that the time has come for those who must worship God to worship God in spirit and in truth. You want to step into your destiny? You can't hear God from the soulish realm. The realm of emotions. The realm of logic. God is not logical. God represents the truth. Some of you have been held bound because you are emotional. You can cry all day. As long as your emotions ain't tied to God, God's not going to answer that prayer. You don't change heaven. You don't knock out the gates of heaven by being emotional. Some of you practice a kind of Christianity that is tied to your emotions. You can never be wrong by the spirit, 
but you can make a lot of mistakes by your emotions. The Bible tells me in the book of Matthew 14, 14, Jesus looked at the multitude. He had compassion over the multitude and he healed them. Compassion is a function of the spirit. Sympathy is a function of the soul. The spirit can never lead you wrong. But the soul, a, a, an emotional person cannot hear clearly from God. Because you're going to be offended by everything and anything. When the devil takes advantage of that, when you stand in God's presence, when your emotion speaks to you, you are going to think that it's God speaking to you. God is not an author of confusion. Can't you see how unstable some people are? When you become unstable, it simply means that you are not being led by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is not flaky, so it can't allow us to do flaky things. One moment you say, Hosanna today, tomorrow crucify him. It simply means that something is radically wrong with your mind. A mind that is emotional is a mind that is not tied to the mind of God. Have this mind which is the mind of God. When you have the mind of God, you can think the thoughts of God. When you have the mind of God, you can hear the voice of God. When you have the mind of God, you can go into visions and not ambition. Because the emotion from the emotional realm, what you think is vision is just an ambition. An ambition glorifies self while vision glorifies God. You must open your spirit. That's why the Bible tells me, take heed what you hear. Take heed how you hear. Because your mind is the battleground. Every invention that's ever been made on this planet started from the mind. Every battle that was ever fought or lost started from the mind. Every adultery that ever took place started from the mind. The books that, that changed the world started from the mind. The inventions that were made that, that transformed our destinies started from the mind. If you want to see miracles in your life and in your nation, think big and think the way God wants you to think. The Bible tells me in the book of Psalm 1, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. In the law of the Lord he meditates day and night. Then he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers, and that shall bring forth his fruit in his season, and whatever he does shall prosper. Do you want to be productive in 2020? You must have the mind of God Esau was emotional and when he lost his birthright the Bible tells me that he cried you can cry but you can cry your way to the heart of God you know crying does not simply mean that someone is repentant you don't cry your way to the heart of God the Bible tells me that because he was not open to the things of God, his many tears could not save him. You don't contact God's presence and God's mercy by being emotional. When you say you are repentant, it has to be an intentional act that comes out of remorse of your past wrongdoing. You must acknowledge that certain things are wrong so that you can change the things that are wrong. Repentance is not doing the same thing over and over again. Repentance is looking at the things you've done wrong and turning your back against those things and saying, I will never go back to those things again. Because the Bible tells me that if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. All things are passed away and everything becomes new. That means the way you think, the way you talk, the way you act becomes absolutely new. And Edom also represents the body. The works of the flesh. Adulteries. Unforgiveness. Pride. If you want to step into the place that God has called you to be, you must renounce the works of the flesh. Judges chapter 11, verse 17 to 18. Then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom, saying, Please let me pass through your land. But the king of Edom would not heed. 
and in like manner they sent to the king of Moab, but he would not consent. So Israel remained in Kadesh. And they went along through the wilderness and bypassed the land of Edom and the land of Moab, came to the east side of the land of Moab and encamped on the other side of Ammon. But they did not enter the border of Moab for the Ammon was the border of Moab. That means if you cannot break through the barriers that the devil has placed your way, you cannot finish this year successfully because the devil has an ass assignment. The Bible tells me in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10 that the thief comes to kill, to steal and to destroy. But I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. What do you see? You can step into your prophetic destiny by not praying. We pray until something happens. We pray to pull down strongholds. We pray to dethrone principalities and powers. We pray to make impossible things possible is there someone in this place was ready to pray through 2020 you can't afford to be silent the bible tells me watch and pray and pray without season tell two three people tell them this is not the time for you to be silent because if you don't pray something bad may happen this is not the time for you to be silent pray that you don't fall into temptation pray that you make your dreams come true pray until you break every barrier because this will stand against you because the bible tells me that when paul wanted to conquer ephesus he fought against the beast of ephesus we must dethrone the powers of the air we must dethrone the powers of the land we must dethrone the powers of the sea because god has given us all our powers all the powers that are greater than all the powers of the enemy the bible tells me that you shall tread upon snakes and scorpions and they shall by no means hurt you why because god has given us powers over all the powers of the enemy today i prophesy that you will have power over sickness you will have power over poverty you will have power over the flesh you will have power over everything that is of the devil in the mighty name of jesus i prophesy that you will walk as a king and a priest that you will be unstoppable in the name of jesus i prophesy that one of you shall chase a thousand and two of you ten thousand i prophesy that even if they come against you in one way they shall disperse in seven different ways i prophesy that every shackle holding you in one spot preventing you from stepping into the place of power and glory is broken by the mystery of the word of god i prophesy that god's glory will follow you wherever you go that god will go ahead of you in the daytime in a pillar of cloud and in the nighttime by the pillar of fire I prophesy that everyone under the influence of the sound of my voice, you will be powerful in the name of Jesus. You will walk in the power of God. You will have the power to create wealth, power to win souls, power to dominate, power to subdue. Touch two people, give them a high five and say, this is my time. I am stepping into glory, stepping into power, stepping into all manner of breakthrough if you believe that shout hallelujah the Bible makes it clear that because they denied them they remained in Kadesh how sad you mean to tell me that God's anointing is not strong enough for you to fulfill your destiny you know I look at pastors our church can't grow because this place is too hard. I look at pastors. Uh, we, 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 can't, we can't win souls because we don't have money. Who told you and money is all you need to evangelize? If there is a pastor in this place and you are failing, it's either you have left the presence of God or you are not called. Because for every vision that God makes, there is a provision. If you're a husband in this place, and the story is the same thing, a life of perpetual struggle, you need to go back home and think and find out why it is like that. The Bible tells me that weeping may endure for a while. 
but joy comes in the morning. The Bible tells me many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them from what? Some. You spend an entire life in perpetual bondage. I don't sympathize with failures. When failure is perpetual, it means it is not the will of God. You can start small, or don't die small. You can start small, or don't remain small. The Bible tells me in the book of Genesis chapter 12, In you shall all the people of the earth be blessed. I am a distributor of blessings. I went back home and everyone I, I, I saw, I came across, I blessed them spiritually, men, mentally, and physically. I blessed them because that is what you were called to do. You were called to bless. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Kings give. They don't beg. It is slaves who beg. If you want to end up like slaves this year, Start begging. Don't look at what the church can do for you. Say, what can I do for this local assembly? You come to the house of God and you're looking for, oh, I want them to bless me. I didn't come to church because they didn't bless me, so I'm going back. Then you don't know why you called. Make a declaration of faith. Touch two tribes. Say, I'm, going to, I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing. <laughs> say it with all conviction. Say, I am a blessing. I was, blessed I was blessed to bless you. To bless you. Do not allow negative things to stop you. Those who allow negative circumstances to direct the destinies will always be enslaved by external forces. 2 Corinthians 10.4 for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but might in God for pulling down strongholds. If you cannot pull down strongholds, you will not step into your prophetic destinies. I declare that every stronghold in your life is pulled down by the name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 44 verse 3. For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm save them. But it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance because you favored them. I prophesy that someone this year is going to walk in the favor of God. Amen. You will move from glory to glory, Amen. from power to power, Amen. from honor to honor. Amen. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Prior to the problems that the people of Israel encountered, it was in that same place before they sent the message to Edom, Miriam had died. They were in a state of mourning. As if that was not enough, the people of Israel began to complain about Moses. Moses, why did you bring us to this place to die? Why didn't you leave us in Egypt? Life and death lies in the power of the tongue. You can't confess the wrong things and expect the right outcome. Confession brings the things you desire. Confession is like a magnet. It brings the things that you desire. That's why God told the people of Israel, As long as I live, I'll surely do to you what I have heard you confess. What have you been confessing concerning the year? If you have been confessing the wrong things, it is time for you to start confessing the right things. Because confessing the right things will give you the right outcome. Tell your neighbor and tell yourself, say, I am strong, I am powerful, I am holy, I am righteous, I am unstoppable. And the confession was so bad that it even affected the leadership. A nation that has a wounded leadership or an organization that's got a leadership that is in pain will never prosper. It is the duty of the leader to direct, to inspire, and to take you to the promised land. 
The Bible tells me, believe in God, so shall you be established. But believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. The Bible tells me, by a prophet, Israel was taken out of bondage. And by prophet, Israel was preserved. The prophetic destiny gives you preservation. The prophetic destiny takes you out of bondage. The prophetic destiny prospers you. And the prophetic destiny also preserves your destiny. The, the truth is, believers are suffering because they have failed to embrace the prophetic anointing. I went back home and I went to the home of my late mentor. I slept in the bed where he was. I told myself I tapped into this grace. I honored my mother in the Lord. I went to his place, the place where he was buried. I thanked God for his life and I told myself I am going to do greater things. There is something what you respect you attract. There is a spirit that is fighting against the people of this nation that is why prophets are not manifesting look at the whole thing i have always said that i am a watchman and anytime i'm in a place no disaster strikes one some weeks i left the next thing a volcano erupts and my whole house with a, a, a messed up with volcanic ash that is not who we are that is not what we're called to do the bible makes it clear in the book of psalm 91 that no evil shall come near the dwelling if you are a man and woman of God and wherever you are there is sickness and there is death and there is disaster that means you are a failed watchman not under my watch there will be no death under my watch there will be no poverty under my watch there will be no disaster under my watch I boast in the name of God God is my strength he has called us and he has planted us and we have an agreement in the spirit realm he said nothing will happen on this planet without revealing it to his servant the prophets and he went further to say whatever you agree on earth as touching anything will be agreed in heaven and whatever you disallow on earth shall be disallowed in heaven I stand as an apostle and a prophet and I declare enough of calamities in the republic of the Philippines volcanoes stop earthquakes stop typhoons stop we stand and we dethrone the handwriting of death and destruction and we bless this nation Philippines you shall rise I declare that no plague will come to this country in the mighty name of Jesus I bless the government I bless the church I bless the institutions of this land I declare that you have life in the mighty name of Jesus receive life you will live and not die touch two three people say I am victorious We cannot play games with the devil. We must disallow things that God disallows. If there is no typhoon in heaven, why should we have it here? We don't have volcanic ash in heaven. Why are we going to have it here? Dominion means speaking to the elements of nature. Joshua told the son, behave yourself, stand still. The son stood still. Jesus defied the laws of gravity. He walked on water and walked on the air. You can do the same thing. Because the Bible tells me, greater things. You know, I don't want to scare some of you by telling you some of my experiences. Before I went to One Nation, I was in my bedroom in 2004 when the spirit of God lifted me up this was not a vision this was a trance I saw it and he took me and we were flying all over the world and I saw nations of the world details by details and he took me to this nation and took me to my sister's house and I saw everything about that nation and when I went to in my sister's bedroom I entered that bedroom and the aircon was so cold and they could not stop the aircon so by the time the experience was over and God took me back to my nation no visa no air ticket flying under the wings of God I called my sister the next day. I said, I know your house. 
He said, what are you talking about? I said, I came. I described her house, white house, this, this. She was, she was frozen. And I told her, I said, aircon in the bedroom of your daughter is not working. I was in that room and it was so cold. She said, how did you know? I said, because I was there. She said, that's the problem we're having. And we just called the technique chance to fix that thing. And eventually when I went to that nation, I took my international driver's license and I was driving everywhere because I knew the road. There are some things I don't want to share because if I share them, you are going to say this man is mysterious. You see, there is a level you come to and you see death, not as death, but as transition. But the truth is, you say, he died. Can spirits die? Spirits cannot die. Spirits don't grow old. They are ageless. So if you say, my physical body is old, you're doing yourself a disservice. I don't use my physical body to define myself. How old are you? I tell myself, infinite. Because spirits do not have date of birth. They are ageless. They don't die. So I say it with all conviction that I cannot die and I will not die because I was not ordained to die. If I leave this body, that's not death, that's transition. This body is not me. This body is just an outfit I need to, to, to stay on this planet. I have a glorious body and I can't wait to fit into that glorious body where there is no sickness and where there is no death. Spirits do not desire immorality. It is the flesh that desires bad things. Tell your spirit to rule over your flesh. Some of you, you can't even control yourself. You see this woman, I want to have sex. I want to have sex. Shame on that type of thinking. Let your spirit rule over your body. And begin to manifest as sons of God. We have the right and we have the power to stop all things. You can stop typhoons. You can stop earthquakes. You can defy the laws of gravity. Because you're a spirit being. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I don't know where you came from. Or the theology you've had in the past. But in team, we eat deep food. We are spiritual. We believe in miracles. Miracles ain't magic. Miracles represents the presence of God. In team, we are not taking on our words. Before something happens, the Holy Spirit will always tell us. We are not led by fear. We are led by the Spirit of God. In team, we are holy. We are the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Let that mind be in you. You know, some of you, you cannot rise above sin because you are so sin conscious. You wake up one morning, you are infatuated with an idea that is not godly, and you begin to dwell on those things. Philippians 4, 8 makes it clear. Whatever is good, whatever is lovely, whatever is true, if there is any virtue in it, dwell on those things. You know, sometimes I meditate and I see myself doing uncommon exploits. And I begin to laugh and they say, he's crazy. Let me tell you, faith involves an element of madness. Because when you laugh over things people don't see, they say you're crazy. So sometimes they're right if they say they're crazy. Because if you don't understand a man, you say he's crazy. You cannot, you cannot make things happen that you have not seen. Whatever your eyes, your mind have seen, you can manifest. What do you see? I was in a conference. A man of God was in that conference. A, a few days after the conference, he died. Because on his way to the conference, the devil tried to stop him by messing up with his car. If there is a pattern in your life, 
And that pattern is a pattern of struggle. You struggle to pray. You struggle to read the Bible. You struggle to give. You struggle to come to church. Watch it. The devil is planning to set you up for destruction. It is abnormal for you to be running away from the things that has life. It is abnormal for a child of God to run away from the truth. I don't want to go to the church. Why? I, feel, I don't feel like going to church. Watch it. Before the devil destroys you, he isolates you. He keeps you in one place and he strikes. I declare by the Spirit of God that everyone isolated by the devil for destruction, by the mystery of the Word of God, I cancel it in the mighty name of Jesus. So before they came to this place, Moses became wounded by the complaints, the constant bickering of the people. Please, every man of God is a man yet controlled and inspired by the Spirit. The Shunammite woman saw Elisha and she perceived, she said, this Man is a man of God. And through perception, she was able to give, meet the need of the man of God. You see, pastors in certain parts of the world, they beg because you are not smart enough to perceive their needs. You know, God made sure that the Levites didn't own anything. Because if the Levite had owned everything and having the power of God, they would have become tyrants. So God wants every part to supply. He gives the men of God strong anointing and he gives the congregation wealth so that the congregation can take care of the men of God, take care of their physical needs so that the men of God can take care of your spiritual needs. That's why the Bible makes it clear. If we have blessed you with spiritual things, can you not bless us in carnal things? Jesus came under the order of Melchizedek. He came under that order. The king of Salem gave Abraham bread and wine. And what did Abraham give to the king of Salem? He gave him substance. He gave him his wealth. You give to the man of God who gives you bread and wine. Bread represents the word. Wine represents the spirit. You give him your substance. You don't contradict what he has been called to do. Anytime the people of Israel attempted to direct Moses, plagues came upon the land. It is not your duty to direct the man of God and say, Bishop, I want you to preach this way. I want you to do this way. Your duty is to support the vision of the man of God. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. That is the criteria. If your man of God is a follower of Jesus and he can hear from God, you have no right to question him. All you need to do is to follow. Because if you come out and say this vision is not good enough, and you come out with another vision, it's going to be divisions. There are many churches in the Philippines. But all the churches are unique and different. I cannot be like another church. God told Moses, he said, let the ark of the tabernacle be fashioned according to that which I have shown you. What God showed us in team is revival, 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 miracles, signs, and wonders, and leadership, and holiness, and faith. So don't tell me to try to copy from other churches. We cannot do what they're doing because the vision is different. Let every man stay in that call in which he has been called. The day we deviate from what God has told us to do, that is when trouble starts. The people of Israel wanted Moses to do something different. And Moses, who was considered the meekest man upon the face of the world, the same man who was so calm, became so angry because of the people he led. The difference between Joshua and Moses, Moses was ready to put his life. He even told God, God, 
If you want to punish these people, punish me. Take my name from the book of life. But not, I'm not going to be Moses. I'm going to be Joshua. Joshua said, choose. Make up your mind. If you want to go to hell, a diwal. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm not going to be Moses. I'm not going to throw away my destiny because of you. No, 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 no. You have to make up your mind. If you want to be small, sorry, this is not the place for you to be. If you want to be inconsequential, sorry, this is not the place for you to be. If you want to do small things, sorry, this is not the place for you to be. But as for me and my house and all those that God has given to us, we are for signs and for wonders. The Bible tells me, those who know their God shall be great and they shall do great exploits. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. So they made Moses sin against God. There was a rock that followed the people of Israel. And that was Jesus Christ himself. And Moses was told to strike the rock once. It represents that you can only strike the Lamb of God once. You cannot crucify him twice. But because of the people of Israel, he struck the rock twice. And so the people of Israel had sinned. There was sorrow at the camp. And the leadership had been compromised because of the people. Most times, leaders fail not because of their weaknesses, but because of the people they lead. I have told God, I will not allow those you gave to me to make me fail. They say, captains, don't, don't abandon the ship. I won't abandon the ship. But if you are going to live in sin, I'm going to throw you off board. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not going to abandon the ship, but you want to be a bad ship? You want to be a bad passenger? We will throw you to the sharks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But that's not going to happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Every one of us will get to the finish line Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So the Shunammite woman, what she did was she identified that Elisha was a man of God gave to Elisha, by empowering Elisha, it activated the spirit and Elisha empowered the woman by giving to the woman what she lacked. Anytime you honor the man of God, God honors you and begins to give you the things that you do not have. Now there are three weapons the enemy uses to hinder believers from going into the place that God has called them to go to. The first one is unconfessed sins of our fathers and nations. Lamentations chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. We have given our hand to the Egyptians and the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. You know what it means? It simply means we compromised our convictions. We compromised our values. We compromised our principles. For what? For material gain. We have given our hand to the Egyptians and the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Our fathers sinned. And are no more. But we be the iniquities. Servants rule over us. There is none to deliver us from the hand. This is what happens. When we cannot confess and renounce the sins of our fathers. The Bible tells me in the book of Proverbs chapter 14 verse 34. Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. The truth is. It was not the people of Israel who sinned alone. The problem of Moab, the problem they had with Edom, came from what their, their forefathers did. Today I declare that everything that is standing against you as a result of the evil things your forefathers did by the mystery of the word of God and the blood of Jesus, it is cancelled in the mighty name of Jesus. I put an end to generational diseases, generational cancer, generational diabetes, generational disfavor. It is finished in the mighty name of Jesus. Second Chronicles 7.14 If my people who are called by my name 
we humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, then I'll heave from heaven and will forgive the sin and heal the land. So shall it be upon this nation in the mighty name of Jesus. Then the second thing is unconfessed personal sins and wickedness. Ezra 9, 7 to 8. Since the days of our fathers to this day, you see, the fathers sinned. And instead of them to stop, they continued in the same direction. Since the days of our fathers to this day, we have been very guilty and for our iniquities, we, our kings and our priests have been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands, to the sword, to captivity, to plunder, and to humiliations as it is this day. And now, for a little while, grace has been shown from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a peg in his holy place that our God may enlighten our eyes and give us a measure of revival in our bondage. Thank God for grace. Because despite everything we have done wrong, you see, actions have consequences. But in the midst of the consequences of our actions, the grace of God will always sustain us. I declare that from this moment, every negative action that you carried out, there will be no reaction in the name of Jesus. The grace of God will sustain and keep you. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Anytime we go into things that are wrong, then bondage will come. You can see that in Ezra 9.13. You can see that in Judges 3.12. And you can see that in 2 Kings 13.3. Then Psalm 103 verse 10. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Nor punished us according to our iniquities. Tell two, three people. Say God is good. And God is gracious. Some of you think that God is the one punishing you. No. It is the consequences of your actions. Because when you do something wrong, the Bible makes it clear. In the book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, so shall he reap. The truth is, some of you are suffering not because God is punishing you, but because you are reaping the consequences of your actions. I declare that by the grace of God, everything you have done wrong is being corrected now by the message of God. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. First John 1.8 if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then finally, ignorance of our power and authority in Christ Jesus. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priest. For me, because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13. Therefore, my people have gone into captivity. Why? Why do people go into captivity? Oh, come on, talk to me. Why do people go into captivity? Because they have no knowledge. Do you have knowledge? Therefore, my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. The honorable men are famished and the multitude dried up with thirst. When you have no knowledge, you will fail in your marriage. You must have knowledge. Check the Bible. Check the scriptures. A man of knowledge increases in strength. David was a man of knowledge. Joshua was a man of knowledge. You can only have knowledge by searching the word of God diligently. If you have knowledge concerning your health, the devil will no longer push you 
anyhow if you have knowledge concerning your marriage concerning your business concerning your church concerning your family the devil cannot stop you knowledge is a shield do you have knowledge absence of knowledge is the beginning of destruction the presence of knowledge is the beginning of elevation promotion protection and power I declare that by the word of God and by the power of positive confession, you will be men and women of knowledge in the mighty name of Jesus. First Chronicles 11, 9. So David went on and became great and the Lord of hosts was with him. David became great because he was a man of knowledge. Second Chronicles 27 verse 6. So Jotan became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. Your ways must be aligned to God's ways. That is how you become great. The Bible tells me in the book of John chapter 3 verse 31. He who comes from above. Oh come on. Where are you from? Beneath. Are you above your problems? Yeah. Or your problems are above you? Someone, you know, you know when believers tell me, I'm so overwhelmed, <laughs> I want to quit. I'll spank you. <laughs> the Bible tells me that no temptation that you cannot overcome. In every temptation, he will provide a way of escape. If a building is on fire, what do you do? You locate the escape routes. I'm overwhelmed. I want to give up. Excuse me? Overwhelmed by what? Only foolishness overwhelms people. Only ignorance overwhelms people. I like challenges because challenges are problems waiting to be solved. And I want to be the man to say, I found it. So don't you ever tell me, I want to quit. I want to quit. <laughs> I can't handle my husband. God didn't say you should handle your husband. God told me to tell you, my grace is sufficient for you. <laughs> if you marry by mistake, stay by grace and by faith. The easy way out is always the wrong way out. Do you understand? The easy way out is always the wrong way out. Because the Bible tells me we must through trials and tribulations do what? Inherit the kingdom of God. You see flight, flight grace. Where is your body in pass? Goodness, no? Trials. Where is your passport? Tribulation. That is how you go to heaven. You don't say I'm going to heaven because the Bible makes it clear that narrow is the way. It is much more, you see, if you want to destroy this building, you put dynamite within seconds. Boom! The entire structure comes falling down. It is easier to destroy than to build. Cowards destroy things. Brave men build things. So don't go breaking homes, breaking marriages, breaking everything. Your solution, let's quit. You just get the marriage certificate. You can tear a mar marriage certificate, but you cannot tear yourself from the fact that you're a failure. Boys marry for sex. Men marry for purpose. Marriage is not something you, you're just walking out of. You walk in and out, oh, I'm done. You know, the, the original meaning of marriage, for this man, for this reason shall a man be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. The original meaning means you are put in a room where there is no door. The only time you come out is when one of you dies. And I know of some naughty men or naughty women who pray, that God kill my husband, kill my wife. I want to be free. <laughs> Hallelujah. A woman actually came to me and told me, uh, Bishop, I want you to pray. I said, what? 
I want my husband to be taken home. I said, I'm not a killer, I'm a healer. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. So in everything you're doing, God is always going to give you a way out. There is a way out. Look for that way out. The God way out. The devil is going to tell you, take your life. It is over. You tell the devil, no. I'm not done until God says, I am done. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. I declare by the mysteries of God that from this moment you will speak as an ambassador of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Then finally, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 7. But God, who is rich in mercy, Say, God is rich in mercy. mercy. Say it with all the conviction. Say, my God God is rich rich in mercy. mercy. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. God loves us so much that he takes our visions very personal. He has invested so much in us So he wants you to succeed. He wants your light to shine so much that men, you know why God wants you to prosper to get to the finish line? He wants your light to shine so that men will see the good works and give him who gets the glory. You know, some of you, you already have the success. And you say, but I want the glory. Why do you behave like that? God is saying, I have made you successful so that I get the glory. When you succeed, when you do all the great things, who gets the glory? God. When you sing well, who gets the glory? God. When you do exploits and you create wealth, who gets the glory? God. When you give to the building fund, they say, this is the greatest giver. Who gets the glory? God. God. So all you need to do is give him the glory. I went to one big minister in India. And his ministry attracts millions of people. I said, what's the secret of your ministry? He said, three things. He said, the gold belongs to God. Don't touch its gold. The girls belongs to God. Don't go touching them. And the glory belongs to God. And for women, you say, but it's only the girls. I'm putting another G. The guys belongs to what? God. So always hand these three things to God. And you will get to the finished line. You will not be derailed from your destiny. You know why? Because God who started this thing in your life is able to finish exceedingly above much more than we think of. Stand to your feet.